um, who chose something else as the answer? Who, who thought it was something else? So not the ask, not passion. You thought it was something else? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, the ability to, to communicate clearly and quickly. Yeah. Anybody else choose something else? I guess it was a ghost that chose something else then. <laughs> Give our judges another second here. What is the what? Oh, passion. Did I not say that? Oh, I, th I thought it was obvious because literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. So passion was, uh, was 44% and it was the, it was the clear winner. Uh, all right. So next we will have uh, Theodore Harvey and Censor Med. Hi, everyone. I'm Theo Harvey, uh, CEO and co-founder of SensorMed. I like to say that uh, I have an uncle named Steve, but not that one. So if I did, I would get his house. Anyway, so uh, uh, for a show of hands, how many of you have older relatives that suffer from any of these conditions? Uh, COPD, congestive heart failure, blood, high blood pressure. Yeah. yeah, diabetes. That's a big one. So look around. As you can see, a lot of us suffer the pain from our loved ones having to understand how to stay healthy outside the doctor. Likewise, my co-founder and I had similar issues when we were dealing with our parents, helping them stay healthy once they were discharged from the hospital or left the doctor's office. So we said, this has got to be a problem we can solve. Of course, this doesn't work now. So what we did was... Um, Oh, it goes down. Okay, thank you. So uh, we saw that there were several issues dealing with health care um, for this vulnerable population. Um, we found out there were three key issues. Number one, chronic conditions. These illnesses, they never go away, but you can manage them. And the most effective way to do that is making sure you go to your doctor's visits, eating healthy, getting your medications on time. So that is what we uh, focused on when we saw the uh, cost. 50% of cost drivers are due to those chronic conditions. Secondly, doctors want to help. Um, we, the studies have shown that doctors, if they interact with the patients at home, they stay healthy and happier. But unfortunately, doctors just don't have the time. They're overwhelmed. And so our salute, we're looking at understanding they want to help, but they don't have the payment for that. And then finally, healthcare hospitals, they are penalized roughly about 2.4 million for what they call unnecessary readmissions. That means a patient was diagnosed with an illness, they left, they came back in 30 days, they get penalized for that. So, what we decided to do, our solution, we focused on a, a, a platform that uh, we have a solution that we focus on uh, helping this need. Our platform is focused on delivering at a scale an app-based monitoring platform powered by AI to solve this solution. And how does it do that? We have a solution that pulls the patient's vitals as well as their psychological profile to understand exactly what non-medical needs they need and provide that at the point of care. So that provides for those uh, non-medical issues we talked about. Also, new regulations that allow this to be compensated, doctors to compensate for their time to look at this data and be engaged with the patients. And then at the end of the day, it's really about results in healthcare. And so we had a year study, we worked with a medical, excuse me, hospital in Georgia, where we focused on readmissions. We were able to reduce their readmission costs by 40% using our platform over a year. So, what we see is that, um, you know, once again, it's not working. So what we saw it was that this is a solution, um, it's a growing problem. You start with an uh, initial issue when it comes to a chronic condition, but the total addressable market is roughly about $24 billion for all the chronic conditions in America. And this is something that can be easily attacked. Um, to be able to kind of achieve this market opportunity, you definitely have to be able to uh, deliver at scale. So how do we work? In essence, uh, imagine a, we work with uh, our manufacturing partners, our device manufacturers provide what they call kits, blood pressure, or pulse oxes, to these patients at scale to their physician practices. Using our platform at the point of care, they deliver these kits to the patients and ensure that the patients are taken care of. 
Our app is making sure the patient knows what's, what they need to see and who they need to visit. While at the same time, the doctor is looking at the data and reacting to the patient data in real time and reaching out to them and getting compensated for it. How much are they getting compensated for it? So basically, this is huge. They're getting paid $100 per patient per month. And that's where our business model comes into play. We basically get 35% of that revenue. So this is how it allows us to drive our traction tremendously. We currently have several different practices across the country and have very strategic partnerships who are licensing our software to pull that data. So one of our clients, Care Medical, if you look in the app store, they have, co they have white labeled our app and we basically have access to over 600,000 patients across the world. This uh, has driven us to have a strong team. My background is focused on sales. I have experience with that. And my co-founder has experience with enterprise sales. This is something we also have uh, experts in the several areas of the clinical, as well as uh, logistics, as well as focused on uh, diet data. At the end of the day, it's really about helping patients. And we're looking to raise $500,000 to build our algorithm and also to increase our funnel with our sales and marketing platform. At the end of the day, this is really about helping patients and having the right investment partner will help us to help every patient take care of themselves and live healthier, happier lives at home. Thank you for your time. Great job, thank you. Now we'll do questions from our judges. So you mentioned $100 per patient per month. Could you explain a little bit sort of the flow of those economics? Yes, so I can get in very detail with you what the CPT codes and all that is, but high level, yes, every time the patient uh, utilizes our platform, the doctor gets paid for training them, for looking at the data, and the reaching out to the patients. Who pays the doctor? CMS, Medical and Medicaid Services, a reimbursement. Just like similar, you went to the doctor, you would got paid, he would got paid for looking at you. They're moving away from that because, like I talked about, the cost drivers are moving towards care at home, preventing the patient from coming into the hospital and the clinic. Last question with that. What would keep them from potentially going to another, let's say a competitor pops up, right, to reduce that commission or that take rate that you're sort of taking from it? Yeah, uh, what would point. keep them on your platform? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, stickiness. <laughs> it's very costly to kind of, you know, take those devices out. And then once doctors have a platform they like, they tend to stay on it. Also, one of the reasons why we're looking for, we have some integrations. Uh, healthcare is about integrating with these databases called EHRs, and so we have some integrations there. We want to further create that stickiness so it fits into their workflow. So it's just a simple matter of clicking here and here, making the requirements, and getting compensated. So it's really about creating that stickiness. And, and typically, every practice we work with, we're trying to get roughly about 100 patients per practice. So it's going to be hard pressed to get all those 100 devices back for those patients for our help. So I have a question about both onboarding and churn. So what does it take for you to onboard new partners, right? And also, how many have you lost in the past so far? And if so, if any, uh, why? When you say partners, you need device manufacturers partners or just uh, strategic partners who help us get more patients? Uh, more patients, the folks that get more patients. Yeah, we have one of our largest ones. We're working on a couple other ones. Care Medical, they have a device that helps patients breathe. Uh, we've been with them for a couple years now. They're our largest revenue source. Um, you know, to our point, we don't, haven't lost any yet um, because, and especially now, these rules just literally changed January of this year. We saw that the rules are changing even more reimbursement coming for these type of models uh, January of next year. So we definitely feel this is a huge time for us to get that investment and go after. And I didn't mention this as well. We have projections of $2 million, right, because we have contracts signed that we have to deliver on. So we need the revenue to help ex excel and meet that demand, trailing $100,000 in revenue, right, from our existing client base. And just the second half of that is, uh, what does it take to onboard a new partner? Yeah, typically uh, it's onboard a partner. So doctors, you tell them about the platform, tell them you can get compensated for it. You ship out a trial, buy kits, they see the reimbursement, that's it. At that point, we set up a platform. We have customer six engineers that sends them out the devices as needed, and they get compensated on a monthly basis. Typically, our rollout is typically, we get to about 100 patients, it depends, um, between two to three months. All right, great job. Thank you. Thank you.